I'm Lena Rao here at the TechCrunch TV studio for our Ask a V series. Um, I have a really awesome guest this week. All my guests are awesome, but especially this week, um, Chi Wa Chen, partner at Kleiner Perkins, focused on consumer internet companies, is here with us today. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thanks Before we go into everything, I just want to um, talk a little bit about your background sure. because it certainly is relevant to what we'll be talking about today. Um, you helped lead investments in Spotify, Clout, Path, Twitter, and Zarly, among many others, for Kleiner. Um, and you actually sourced the original Excel investment back when you were an associate at, at Excel in Facebook, mm -hmm. which is which is amazing. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about mobile because I know that's a huge area of focus for you in your investment thesis. Um, and you've talked a lot about mobile publicly um, and how we're going to use mobile, but. I feel like the trend now is like this whole idea of mobile first and developing mobile first and 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 pushing that. Even I think um, Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook's earning call yesterday mentioned that as well. What are your thoughts on that? Is that the way to go? Would you advise our entrepreneurs to go that way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this year will be the first year in which mobile and tablets actually exceed the installed base of PCs and laptops. And if you think about what that really means, that's extraordinary. That means that people are don't not only have more mobile devices than they do PCs and laptops, but they're really using them more. And the analogy that I like to give is, you know, if you think about someone who's in their 40s or 50s 10 years ago, they were considered an internet user if they had a Windows 98 machine and it was in the corner of their family room and they checked their email two or three times a week. That was an internet user, right? Nowadays, that person probably has an iPhone or probably has an Android device. They're using it 20, 30, 40 times a day. They don't even think of themselves as doing computing tasks, but they're using it for every single thing that they do. And they're using it to find directions. They're using it to make phone calls. They're using it to search the internet. They're using it for sports scores. They're using it likely to transact on commerce, uh, a lot of their favorite sites, whether it be One Kings Lane or Fab or Amazon or eBay. Uh, we're living in not only a mobile first world, but I think soon we're going to be living in really a mobile only world outside, outside of hardcore productivity tasks like Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or you know, long word documents or publishing pretty significant you know, complicated design things. So where does uh, sort of the platform fall into that? So you know, we have iOS, we have Android, there's Windows. Um, mobile first, should, should developers and entrepreneurs be developing for the web, or should they be developing native applications? They have to be building native applications for both iOS and Android. And it's really critical. It depends on where they're focused. If they're focused primarily in the US and North America, iOS first. If they're focused in Asia or Latin America, Android is uh, larger at this point in time. But will, will we ever get to a point where it's web first, not platform first? I think it's unlikely. I think the reality is that web, mobile web is going to just stay in lockstep a year or two behind native applications in terms of their functionality. Because what you can do with a native application is you have the advantage of speed and you have an advantage of taking, uh, t uh, working with all of the capabilities on the device itself, whether it's the camera or GPS or social, or, social yeah. or any of the sensors that actually are going to get put more and more into these devices. So while web is going to improve, Native is also going to improve. So the reality is if you want a really, really high performance application, and I think you saw this in the case of Facebook who went to mobile web and then came back to native applications, you're going to need to do native. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit to some of the questions <coughs> that um, sure. our audience sent in. Uh, you talked a little bit about e-commerce um, when it came to mobile. Gary, one of our readers, asked, what are some of the new trends of e-commerce that you see making its way into other sectors or industries? Yeah, so I think what's interesting is that e-commerce, if you looked at Web 1.0 e-commerce, essentially what it did was it replaced catalogs. So instead of getting that catalog in the mail, you went to a website and you could buy something from William Sonoma or Pottery Barn, or in the case of Amazon, you could buy a book or a CD, right, instead of the, the subscription CD club or going to the local bookstore. Right. Um, as we moved into Web 2.0, e-commerce became vertical e-commerce, things like Fab or One Kings Lane. Now, mobile commerce is yet another 
iteration of that, but it's fundamentally different because I think for the first time, you're actually seeing the provider or the supplier side of e-commerce being impacted primarily on the services side. So we're investors in a company called Zarly, for example. Right? Zarly, if you look at what it's doing, it's something that could have been done on the buyer side in Web 1.0. You have a website, it has pictures of products and services that you can purchase from people around you. What it couldn't happen though is it couldn't happen on the supplier side because the person who's actually baking that custom cake for you or making that custom piece of furniture or coming out to do yard work or clean your gutters or power wash your deck, their mobile, mobile device is actually now a way for them to generate income. When they're out and about, they're getting messages, they're seeing your address, I need to go to Lena's house next, and here's what she wants me to do, and then I can accept payment from you right at that moment. So the transformation actually has happened through mobile on the supplier side when it comes to services commerce. And yeah, mobile. so that's really interesting to me because now it sounds like that those trends are capturing the workforce. Correct. You yeah. know, the workforce is being disrupted. Uber is another great example, right? Uber is something that, in theory, on the buyer side, could easily have happened in Web 1.0. You go to a website, you push a button, you order a car. Now, it's a little bit harder if you're standing on a street corner, but the idea of being able to order something on the web makes sense. It couldn't happen on the supply side, though, right? Because in those cars, people didn't have internet-connected computers that told them where they need to be, where the person is waiting, at what time, and enable them to collect payments. So e-commerce or the services commerce element has really been reinvented on the supply side in mobile and companies like Uber and Zarly are just going vertical in terms of their growth because suddenly you enable and empower service providers to make a living and right. they make a powerful living that they couldn't have made before if it weren't for these mobile devices in their pockets. For sure. So are there any companies besides Zarly, it sounds like Uber, that you, you're particularly interested in? You know, I tell this story often, and it's funny because you guys wrote a couple of weeks ago that Cherry had shut down. Yes. But I just, I love Cherry. I love Travis. I yeah. thought that that idea was so fantastic. I wrote about that when it first launched. I'm a bit, I was a Cherry fan too. We, we were big Cherry users, all of us, oh, right? Really? Because it's just, it's such a convenient, convenient value proposition that for maybe five dollars more than the cost of a normal car wash they would actually come to your office and wash your car and do a great job of it and you can rate them in real time right yeah i think the challenge with cherry the the brilliant insight they had was that you can actually get rid of all the real estate because yeah. you don't need that big car wash and that's 60, 70 percent of your operating expenses. Which is a huge disruption, disruption yeah. that's happening in the retail industry as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we could do an entire show on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sean had a really interesting question um, that, that is definitely not the norm for our VCs, but yeah. he had noticed uh, in your Twitter profile that you uh, had, had mentioned that you follow God. And uh, his question is, are you surprised by how underserved the faith space is by tech companies? What do you think disruption looks like for believers and faith-based communities? That's a great question. Uh, I've been a Christian my entire life, and it's actually a really important part of why I do what I do. I believe that every single person has been created to do something really specific, and part of that holy ambition is figuring out what that is and being able to pursue it with all of the skills and the talents that God has given us in creating us and in giving us the life experiences we've had. And um, you know, as I've explored through that journey and learned about how that intersects with what I do every day at Kleiner Perkins, what I've learned is that there are a lot of people in the faith community who are using technology. Let me give you two quick examples that I've found inspiring. Uh, they are entrepreneurs too, just as Dave Morin at Path or Bo Fishback at Zarly or you know Jack Dorsey at Square is an entrepreneur. These guys are entrepreneurs too. The first is Scott Harrison, who uh, I think he's been on this show actually, or he's certainly been on TechCrunch. He's the founder of Charity Water, and mm -hmm. and um, his faith is a very important part of what he does. And you can go read about you know sort of what he's gone through in okay. his life and the transformation. But he's figured out how to use technology to impact what he hopes will be by 2022, 100 million people getting clean water in Africa. And it came from a very simple insight. It came from an insight that people, when they donate money to nonprofits, they have no visibility or accountability into what happens after the fact. So he went out into the field, he got GPS enabled cameras to take pictures of every single well and now has a $5 million grant from Google to install flow meters on every single well. So when you give a dollar to Charity Water, 
you'll get an email 18 months down the line that says, Lena, your well has now been built in Ethiopia. And once the flow meters are up and running through this Google grant, you'll be able to see every day your dollar, how many ounces or gallons or you know, hundreds of gallons of water your donation has helped um, create. Right? Well, and Charity Water has really taken off probably for that reason is that people now are yeah, yeah. people yeah. are now using them you know for birthdays and and other sort of uh, fundraising activities individually it, it sort of empowers the individual absolutely and I think S Scott what you'll hear him talk about and what people who work with him will say is he's really brought integrity through technology he's used technology to bring integrity to the whole nonprofit giving process so that you have more trust in the platform and as a result you can invest intelligently another example is a gentleman in Oklahoma City named Bobby Grunwald and um, Bobby on the first week or two the App Store launched launched the Uversion Bible the Uversion Bible now across iPhone Android Blackberry Nokia etc has 80 million active users wow. which has got to be one of the largest um, engaged customer bases anywhere in the world is up there with like a Twitter or an Instagram right. in terms of scale right and he's got 80 million people who are studying scripture who are getting video downloads of teaching and uh, you know different types of counseling and life transformation advice and curriculum through just an iPhone and, and Android application wow, and they built active users. yeah they built that company on the I can't remember the exact number but I think it was the last hundred fifty thousand dollars or so of seed funding that they had for something else that they had been wow. working on and now they're one of the largest applications uh, in in the mobile world so that's a great story you know, there's great Great, great things happening in the faith community around technology. Awesome. Well, um, we're, our last question uh, is from Jordan, um, and and his question is: As the needle moves farther away from B to C, mm -hmm. so business to consumer, mm -hmm. um, should we expect more revenue requirements for successful financing rounds? I'm assuming this yeah. means more to more, more for yeah yeah. So. Um, I think you're seeing the market shift overall to favor enterprise companies away from consumer companies. We went through a period of time over the last, call it four years, 2007 through 2011, or maybe through midway through 2012, where it was just very, very frothy in consumer companies and everything was getting funded. Uh, but what I would say to Jordan would be, don't pay attention to the ups and downs of what venture capitalists are funding at any given time. Those cycles, they really, really don't matter. Um, the best consumer companies were funded in the dark days of the consumer internet, 2004, 2005, 2006, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Series A's, when everybody thought, ah, there isn't going to be another consumer company. Either the consumer web has failed because of the post-2000 bubble, or Google is so successful they're going to own everything. And so if you have a vision, if you have a passion, if you have a very clear problem that you're solving as an entrepreneur, don't worry about what venture investors are funding or not funding. Go pursue that. Build a great product and a great market, and you'll get funded. So ignore the Series A, this, this whole Ignore all the macro drama. trends. Solve the problem that you want to go solve and build the company you want to build. Well, that's a great way to end. Thank you so much, Chiwa, and uh, welcome. Thank you.